Welcome to Solubility and Concentration. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to describe the amount of solute dissolved in solution. So, one sugar or two, relatively speaking. One way of describing the amount of solute dissolved is with the terms dilute and concentrated. These are terms you're probably familiar with, but let's take a look at them in the context of this cup of coffee. If you were to add sugar to this coffee, let's say a pinch of sugar, you would refer to the amount of sugar in the coffee as a dilute mixture. However, if you were to add five packets of sugar, that would be considered pretty concentrated. Now, these terms dilute and concentrated are okay for describing things, but they're limited because they are relative terms. They do not refer to any set or defined amount. Dilute simply refers to a little bit of solute, and concentrated refers to a lot of solute. And that's okay for some situations, but there is a more precise way of describing the amount of solute, and we call that solubility. Now solubility is a property of a substance, and it refers to the amount of solute that can be dissolved in a fixed quantity, typically 100 grams, of solvent at a given temperature. Let's take a look at an example. We'll look at the solubility of sodium chloride, regular table salt, at zero degrees Celsius. This is our given temperature for the solubility we're going to discuss. So for table salt at zero degrees Celsius, you can dissolve 35.7 grams of sodium chloride in 100 grams of water. This statement gives the solubility of sodium chloride at this particular given temperature. Now specifying this given temperature is important because solubility changes with temperature. And this change in solubility, this change that occurs with temperature, can be modeled with solubility curves. This is a fairly common example of a graph of solubility curves. You'll typically see more than one substance represented at a time. This particular graph shows potassium nitrate, KNO3, sodium nitrate, NaNO3, and sodium chloride, table salt. We're going to pay particular attention to potassium nitrate just to get a feel for how these solubility curves work. The first thing to notice is that the x-axis shows temperature. So here's our changing temperature. Solubility is displayed on the y-axis. And you'll note that it says per 100 grams of water. So it's, this is the solubility for these salts in 100 grams, our specified amount of water. So let's take a look at the solubility at two different temperatures. At 80 degrees, the solubility is between 125 and 150. So let's call this 130 grams as a solubility. This tells you that you can dissolve 130 grams of potassium nitrate in 100 grams of water at this temperature, at 80 degrees Celsius. That's the limit for how much can be dissolved. Let's look at another temperature. At 40 degrees, the solubility is a little bit above 50. Let's call that 55. So at 40 degrees Celsius, we approximated the solubility to be 55 grams of potassium nitrate able to dissolve in 100 grams of water for 40 degrees Celsius. Now notice how I'm taking values from the curve itself. I'm looking for what these values are for points on this curve. And these two amounts represent something called saturation. These are the maximum amounts of solutes at those temperatures that can be dissolved in 100 grams of water. And that maximum amount, the limit that can be dissolved, is saturation. If I were to dissolve 130 grams at 80 degrees, the solution I make would be considered saturated or full. It's full on solute. I could not dissolve any more. If I were to add extra solute to the solution past 130 grams, so after it's been saturated, if I tried to add more solute at the same temperature, you would see that extra amount of solute would just fall to the bottom of the solution and not become dissolved. If I have less solute dissolved than the saturation limit, if I have less than 130 degrees in this case at this temperature, 
say I only dissolve 100 grams, so that's less than 130, then my solution would be unsaturated, literally not full on solute. An unsaturated solution is a solution that you can dissolve more solute into. So these are two ways to describe the amount of solute that's dissolved in a solution compared with the saturation or the limit of how much solute can be dissolved. There is a third term that can be used to describe a solution in this similar way, relating it to the saturation point of the solution, and that is supersaturated. Supersaturated essentially means it's overfull. Supersaturation is a special condition that can happen when a saturated solution is cooled down. So let's take a look at an example of how this works. Let's say at 80 degrees, I dissolve 130 grams of potassium nitrate. So this is a saturated solution at 80 degrees Celsius. If I now lower the temperature to 40 degrees Celsius, the new limit, or the limit at 40 degrees Celsius, we said is 55 grams. That means there's a lot of extra potassium nitrate that's dissolved. And one of two things can happen if I cool it down this way. Either the extra, so the 75 grams difference between the two saturation points, that extra amount can either precipitate out, which means it falls out to the bottom of the container, or it can stay in solution. And if it does stay, if that extra amount does stay, it's considered super saturated. Because 130, to, because 130 grams at 40 degrees is more than the limit should be. That wraps up our lesson on solubility and concentration. The terms we talked about today are dilute, concentrated, saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.